From the Azare Desert through the Temple of Sakura to the Amber Spike Mountain, Kingdom Rush Frontiers is a fast-paced, action-filled tower defense game. There's something about tower defense games that I just can't get enough of. Unlike the others, Kingdom Rush requires players to be attentive as summoning your reinforcements, commanding your troops, selecting tower upgrades and making it rain with fireballs are all incredibly vital aspects to ward off enemy waves. Kingdom Rush does not allow for set and forget gameplay and, as you delve deeper into the game, you'll come to realise that the towers are simply not enough. This is the second instalment in the Kingdom Rush franchise, developed by Ironhide Game Studios. Frontiers is not so much an evolution, but more of a subtle upgrade to the original. But hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This time around, there are new enemies, levels and achievements to unlock. Each of the 40 enemy types has its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and as a result, each round has a very dynamic feel. Carefully planning your attacks and tower placement is vital, but your strategy can, and should, change depending on the types of enemies in each wave. The goal in Kingdom Rush Frontiers is the same as most other tower defense games out there, to prevent waves of enemies that stroll mercilessly along a path from reaching your kingdom. By placing defensive towers, each with a specific attack type along the outskirts of the path, you'll be able to defend against the enemies as they travel within firing distance. Some enemies are relatively weak, while others can be incredibly challenging and will not go down without a fight. If too many enemies manage to reach your city, it's game over, and in the case of Kingdom Rush Frontiers, that magic number is 20. As you clear through the waves, the player is rewarded with coins that can be used to upgrade the tower's capabilities and power, as well as purchase special recruits to help fight off enemies. It's in the player's best interest to not let enemies through their defenses, as missing out on kills also means missing out on the coins dropped. Throughout each game, the player is allowed to use a few select special moves that help to defend against the seemingly endless onslaught. You're able to call in reinforcements in the form of militia, basically glorified farmers with pitchforks, and summon a hail of fireballs. These are free to use but have a timed cooldown, so again, the player should be careful on when to use each of these. The player also has command of a hero character, who is generally your last line of defense. This unique character is stronger than your average troop and can be a huge asset in battle. You can utilize the hero in many different ways, depending on the type of hero you are currently controlling. A melee brawler may be great in the last stand position, while a caster may be better suited behind some of your standard troops to provide additional support. There's a few heroes to unlock through regular play, and others can be unlocked via the in-app purchases. Whichever you choose, the hero can level up independently, allowing them to deal more damage, take more hits, or give them special attacks. Aesthetically, not much has changed from the previous installment. The graphics, sound, and tower upgrades seem virtually untouched. However, the new levels, enemies, and heroes more than make up for this. Quite a large range of in-app purchases and secondary currency items have been included to help out the struggling player, and there's always tips available in-game which can be of great help to newcomers. I highly recommend trying the game without reading these, as it's more fun to discover the nuances of the game firsthand. Later in the game, the number of waves in each game can increase significantly. This can start to make the game feel tedious, and games can last upwards of 20 minutes. Not only that, but it's especially frustrating when a single enemy can slip through your defenses towards the final wave, costing you that 3-star rating. Keep in mind though that you can leave the game in the middle of a wave and resume where you left off. I'm a huge fan of the tower defense genre. Games such as Bloons, Field Runners, and Geo Defense really set the bar high, and Ironhide Games created a masterpiece with Kingdom Rush. Frontiers doesn't do a lot to evolve the formula, but it does expand on it significantly. There's a lot of popular culture references and Easter eggs to be found, and a few unexpected twists as well. Things like enemy characters clearing a brand new path through a forest to turn the tide in battle. There's a lot to see and a lot to do, and you're in control. Your decisions on what to build, what to upgrade, and when to use special attacks will determine your fate. Kingdom Rush Frontiers is an excellent title and well worthy of a purchase. The game costs $2.99 on iPhone and iPod Touch, and $4.99 for the iPad version. Remember, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thanks for joining us for today's review. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest mobile games. This has been Alex for GameMob, that's www.gamemob.com.